Hello. I hope everybody can see me. I'm not quite sure what happened. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Please come back. Ah, there's a little bit of me. Right, um, good. Yes, jump up to the next link and then you're back. Um, good stuff, I'm back and sparky. So if I get lost again, um, come back again. So yeah, we were asking about the cages putting them both in the same cage and why that's really not a bad good and um, a good idea it causes a huge amount of social stress nobody can actually escape from each other so generally have your birds in different cages whenever possible also when they're they are in cages do try to give them some privacy perhaps a towel or something like that in between the cages so that they can relax without constantly seeing each other or antagonizing each other which is really important so just for that little bit of social inter and um, peace separate cages is definitely the way going and um, got some more questions Okay, so Rosie um, was asking about the best way of perhaps trying to educate the, trying to educate some um, pet shop owners about how people can interact with the greys that are in their shop. Um, what's the best way to do it? And I would look at it in um, terms of height of cage. For example, the shop want them there they want people to be able to see them but we want best welfare for the parrots that are there so i would suggest that they raise their cages higher so if they raise raise their cages higher and have a perch higher than your average person walking past then that allows that parrot to feel safer because they're above the person that's approaching also to try and encourage them to have a distance between the walkway and where the cages actually are. Some sort of barrier so that people can't go right up, stare at, and even put their fingers through, which is, yeah, silly, but people do it. And it really does intimidate parrots hugely when that happens to them. Um, but it's giving them that height advantage that's really important. And it's one of the things I always recommend to parrot owners anyway, even with their normal cage, is to raise it so that the parrot is above you and feels that little bit safer. So Michelle is asking why her parrot is regurgitating um, for her husband. And that's a question that comes up in the parrot groups that I'm um, admin on and I frequent. frequent really quite a lot um, people presume that the parrot is being sexual towards the person and in actual fact quite often it's not um, parrots will regurgitate and do wiggle wings when they're just happy to see you when they just want to express I really like you it doesn't mean that they want to have sex with you they just want to show fondness and quite often people get really freaked out by this and they ignore the parrot or they walk away from the parrot. And I've even heard some people spray water at the parrot. All of that is not really terribly nice. Um, so the best way of dealing with that is just acknowledge and say, I love you too, life is good. And then um, do something else with the bird instead. So that makes a big, huge difference. But please don't ignore your parrot when he's regurgitating and doing wiggle um, wiggle wings because it's like ignoring a child who just comes up and gives you a hug. It's not a nice thing to do. And it is just an expression of friendship rather than sex. Um, 
works out what other questions have we got here yeah um let's see further down the page where are we where are we uh, da, 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 da. loads of really good questions okay so jenny's asking what to do when her cag isn't treat motivated and um, he loves when she pets his head um, but this makes it hard to do training exercises what can i do well the first thing i would ask is what are you trying to train your parrot to do um you know and why do you think you just necessarily need food to do that um for example if you want to encourage your parrot to go into a pet carrier to go outside um you could have his normal bowl of food inside that in the pet carrier or you could have a favorite toy or the likes of my Roy, if you put some paper in there for him to chew up, he's more likely to go in and chew it up. So rewards don't have to just be treats. They can be whatever your parrot enjoys doing. You said that um, he loves scratches. So say, for example, you're teaching him to go to a place like um, a perch. He goes to his perch, he gets a head scratch. That's just as great a motivator as a bit of food for this particular parrot. So it doesn't all have to be about food and treats. It's whatever your parrot finds rewarding. Um, what I've quite often used for reinforces from own parrots is some watching some videos on YouTube, um, particularly SpongeBob. They quite like SpongeBob. A bit violent, but they quite like it. And I'll say, right, go to Perches. They go to Perches. I turn on YouTube and they sit and watch SpongeBob. So the reinforcer for going to the perch is watching TV. So it's really whatever that parrot finds rewarding is the reward that you use. And um, because I wanted to keep Sparky occupied and over there, I've given him some egg boxes to play with. He finds those um reinforcing so he's staying choosing to stay on top of his cage rather than fly at me um, and land on me while i'm doing this and that's his reinforcer an egg box there's no food in them he just wants to clatter around make noise and make mess and um, it's what he does best um don is asking about her male cag chewing his feet it lasts for about two weeks um she gives him some pain meds and puts a cap on him um to stop the chewing the vets think it's hormonal and um, do you know of any other grades that suffer with this um i would suggest don going back to your vet and asking for some blood tests suggesting some blood tests um depending what age your parrot is he may not be at an age whereby hormones would be affecting any of his behaviors anyway um so male cags don't become socially sexually mature until they're about 13 14 so if he's younger than that then it's less likely to be anything to do with hormones so yes i think go back to the vet have a discussion um about what else can be done and that would be a really good idea um i think putting a cape on him to stop it might not be such a great idea and um, yes it's stopping him from doing it but it's not understanding why is he doing it um, and I think it's important to understand the why before you just try and prevent him from doing it um, Esme um, is really interested in parrots yay and recently visited a parrot sanctuary and they were all rescued and then being companion pets and there were quite a few parrots with feather loss from picking but the staff reported that this generally got better once they were settled in um, she's wondering if parrots who have lived as pets would end up happier and having a higher standard of welfare when moved 
to the larger sanctuary aviaries or if they would experience some negative effects in terms of welfare and emotional state grief by losing their human care taker. Um, and I think that's a really good question. Um, when parrots have formed a bond with us, formed a flock with us, then they do experience grief, grief when we when they lose us. Um, so a parrot finding himself going from a home environment into a sanctuary may experience some loss. Do can they grieve? Yes, they can. Um, I'm living with Roy, who's 35 years of age, and Roy lost his Sar Sarah, um, and Roy lost his Sarah and went into the most horrendous welfare unfriendly situation whereby he spent three years in a garage in a tiny cage with only a brass bell for company. Um, Roy came to me and I worked with improving his welfare and his emotional state and Roy still talks six, seven years later, Roy still talks about Sarah. Um, and yeah, that's, and he talks to about her in context um, of what Sarah does um, and what Sarah used to say to him. Um, amongst other things, um, you are a pussy cat. Yeah. Um, so you, yeah, it's quite interesting. Parrots are very adaptable. They're more adaptable than we give them credit for. Um, and I think as long as the sanctuary is doing a very careful introduction, which I'm sure they are, then they can cope with the new situation. I don't know that we can say for certain if they're happier in that situation than in the home environment. Um, but yeah, that's something that's worth investigating. Um, Michelle's bought her parrot a bath. Um, oh, crikey, yeah. Michelle, it'd be lovely to know what species of parrot you've got. If he's a new world parrot or an old world parrot, that would be really useful. Um, I wonder if I can, it says I can pin comment, but I'm not sure um, I can do that. But anyway, so Michelle has very kindly went out, bought him a parrot bath, but her parrot has decided he prefers his water bowl. And she would prefer, oh, he's a grey and he's 27. Oh, bless his wee cotton socks. Yeah. The greys are infamous for that. You try and get them to do one thing, they'll do the complete opposite. Um, my three, the tag and the two cags, yeah, they will take great delight and when they get a fresh bowl of water of sticking their heads in it, scattering it everywhere. And yeah, then I've got to mop the floors. So how can you stop them doing it? Probably not. What I would probably advise is put some towels down around the water bowl so at least when he scatters water everywhere, it won't soak the floors up and you won't fall on them. Um, but a good thing to remember about your African greys is they need more spraying and misting than most people realise. When you go to the Congo, you go to Uganda, you go to um, Principe Islands, the first thing you notice is how wet, humid, and how much it rains. Like I'm from Scotland, it rains a lot here, but boy, it rains more in Principe Island. It rains every single day. And I saw grey parrots flying through heavy rain um, because if they didn't, they wouldn't get anywhere. So every day it's raining there. In Uganda, where they live, it, it does rain um, quite often during the day or in the evening. So these parrots were designed to live in warm, humid, wet conditions. And one of the things that we keep forgetting about is that's what they evolved to cope with. So we're bringing them into homes that are dry, centrally heated or air conditioned, and they're not getting enough moisture around their feathers. So a good recommendation is to miss them at least two to three times a day. They don't have to be soaked, but they do have to be misted. And a lot of parrots that are referred to me for feather um, plucking, that's exactly one of the first things we do is we increase the moisture in that atmosphere and we mist them 
three, four, five times a day. Um, so do remember to do that. And that's a really good idea. And it really does help. Right, another question over here. And I see that Daniela has joined us and she was in Uganda on the Shades of Grey tour um, in June. And Danielle can testify to the fact that, boy, is it humid over in Uganda <laughs> um, most times of the year, um, which is great for the greys. Um, fizzy hair for us. The cockatoos, the cockatoos live in a drier environment to the greys. So yes, they need some spraying just to keep that feather conditioning, but not to the same extent, Lisa, as the greys do. Um, honestly, I was shocked when I was in Principe. I knew it was going to be wet. I knew it was going to be moist. But by Jove, um, my hair was out there most days from the fizz from it. But what was fascinating was watching those greys um, fly around, get wet, all of that lovely stuff. Interestingly enough, the Principe greys tended to sit out on the, um, the exposed branches and the rain would come down on them whereas the Ugandan greys are a bit wimpy and when it started to rain they would go for cover but your Principe greys are far hardier and they sat out and they just sucked it up all of that rain. Um, other questions? What are you doing? You've went quiet. Oh. As everybody knows who's watching this, when there's a quiet grey or a quiet parrot, you instantly think, gosh, what are you up to? Um, but Sparky was being a good boy. You were a good boy, Sparky. Sparky's contemplating being told that he was good. There's going to be a reaction. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, there will be a, a, a reaction to that. Ali has asked about two female cags in separate cages. Ah, oh, Sparky's on the move. Um, two female um, cags who are in separate cages who fight if they get close to each other. And she would like to possibly put them into one new cage for the purposes of downsizing. Um, is there any way of getting them not to fight if they get too close to each other? And I would honestly say, Ali, is do not ris risk it. Um, because those two females will be viewing their own cage as their own ter territory, their own nesting site, and they will be competing with each other for access to that really important resource. Um, if space is at a premium, I would consider two smaller cages if absolutely necessary. But I wouldn't ever consider putting two um, parrots who already have a fighting history in the same cage with each other. I think that would be disastrous. Um, you don't write to say what they do when they're away from their cages. And it's possible that they have a good tolerance for each other away from the cages. They're just territorial about it's mine, I'm keeping it. With my own cags, all of them are, they're all males in this household. Um, they're all males. But Milo's cage is in the hall. If Sparky dares to land on it, Milo will come from upstairs and fly at that cage. And then there'll be that kind of posturing going on and this is mine and I'm bigger than you and all this sort of thing. And I don't want that to escalate because they all have to live here. Um, so whenever I see Sparky going to Milo's cage, um, I now can tell him to go back to his own. It took a long time to teach that, but it's nice and safe. Um, and absolutely no landing on other people's cages. Um, if you haven't got to the level where you can teach one to go one somewhere and one to go the other place, then for safety, always put a towel or something on top of the cages so that if one of the blighters lands in the cage the other one can't go underneath and bite a toe off and by jove i've i've seen that happening in situations so 
going in everybody else's cages is just a huge no no huge no no um i always remember roy when sparky when he first arrived because sparky's a rehomed um, and sparky was pushing the limits to see what he could get away with and he landed on roy's cage and roy gave it push off push off roy is so polite sparky is not he's got a potty mouth huge potty mouth but my roy is push off in a very polite tone of voice and oddly enough sparky did push off so that was good situation solved um right other questions i think there's something else da, 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 da. Right, another question about foraging and enrichment um again it's whatever is enriching to your bird um there are some amazing um websites devoted just to that subject of foraging um some birds love foraging some don't um i quite often hide potassio nuts in egg boxes cardboard egg boxes for mine to rip up and find roy would rather starve than find a potassio in an egg box. Roy does not do foraging. Roy is your shredder. He is the chainsaw of parrots. Um, Sparky quite enjoys um, finding stuff in tissue paper, put it in an egg box, not that interested. Milo. So the point being is that parrots can really sort of um have choose what's enriching to them and um, we just have to be their guides and guiding them to what they can do and um, another question about parrots not perhaps liking other people in the household it goes back to um the pet shops always ensure that that parrot has a place where he is higher than the person approaching just for safety and um, the parrot feels safe and therefore is more likely to be tolerant of the person approaching all right other questions uh, da, da, da. now that lovely wee sound that sparky is making it now i just love that sound the happy beak grind grinding beaks i could go to sleep listening to that sound absolutely fabulous do you hear it in the wild yes you do hear it in the wild and it's just amazing i was collecting parrot poop samples for um which is um, for a study that was being done so i had to be under a tree um as the parrots were going to sleep at night and also before they woke up in the morning so i could get the fresh morning balm of poop and just listening to that grinding was just incredible absolutely amazing um what other questions back to the questions stop with the stories um yeah um while i'm looking for more questions um a little plug for world parrot trust i have to plug um some of the pictures i've taken of wild parrots um i've published in this year's count well, 2020s calendar there's a lovely one of two gray parrots rubbing beaks with each other and also a macaw one macaws are amazing absolutely incredible creatures um huge clumsy flyers they crash into trees you hear them from miles away and it kind of makes you realise when you hear a macaw in the wild and how they can communicate with each other for about two miles away and you bring something as noisy as that into a household and you wonder why they're screaming. Um, they're not really screaming, they're just calling to each other. But they're loud when they do it. Greys are quieter. Well, the mainland greys are quieter. The Principe greys are noisy. They're noisier than the mainland greys. That was another big difference I noticed about them, how loud they were when they were communicating. They were sparky, they were very loud. You would not have approved, not approved at all. Um, so that was another difference with them as well. 
Another important thing to remember when you're establishing a relationship with your parrots and the fam human family that they're living with is to always bring in flock calls. Let your parrot know where you are in the house. Say goodbye to your parrot. Tell them that you're leaving. Welcome them when you come back because these are the kind of things that do happen in the wild. The grey parrots do a lovely sound. I call it the owl sound of too, too. And that's them just calling to each other from a distance. Where are you? Where are you? And they make that sound in the wild as they're just communicating with each other, letting each other know. The scarlet macaws, on the other hand, it's like, woohoo! And they scream at each other. And boy, you know that they're there. So the greys are sort of more sedate with that, a little bit quieter, um, apart from when they learn bad sounds like fire alarms, smoke alarms, mobile phone sounds, all of that lovely stuff that just drives us off our heads. But we have to sort of put up with it. Um, oh, thanks, Leanne. Have I got a book? Oh, no. Um, what I love doing is taking the pictures of the, the wild parrots and putting some science on those pictures and just loving to educate people about what they're doing out in the wild and extrapolating from that so that we can look after them better in captivity. Um, my colleague Laurie um, and I have written some articles about wild grey parrot behaviour and that sort of thing. And I've got them on my own parrot page. Um, we've got some articles published by World Parrot Trust and we've got a few coming up to be published in there. And also I'm writing about the Princeppi greys because not many people have written very much about them apart from one PhD study. And the Princeppi greys are really interesting, I think. Um, and then when I come back from Brazil, I'm hoping to be able to speak more about the macaws that are there and all that lovely stuff. What on earth are you doing? I think he had a wee fly there because I, he heard Milo out in the hall and he didn't realise that the sitting room door is closed and Milo might have flown into the room, in which case Sparky would have to have been all big and sparkiest. Um, so yeah, I think that's me covered about most of the questions. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed this evening and I'm very sure that the APBC will do some more. Um, they'll be doing more Ask the Expert. We've got reptile people, horse people, dog people, cat people. You know, we cover so many different animals and we love sharing our knowledge of them because it just all helps us keep them in captivity or just makes it more fun to learn more about them. So do check back to this page to find out when the next Ask the Expert is. And also the APBC are running, um, they run a lot of webinars on different subjects, um, some for professionals, some for caregivers, some for just everybody to learn something about. And I think there's going to be some more about parrots um, coming up at some point. Um, I know I was trying to encourage um, what on earth? Where did you find that? Crikey. You haven't even got a clue where he got that from. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, you've always got one eye on the parrot, don't you, when you're doing anything. But we're trying to get some webinars and some veterinary people coming along um, who are parrot experts to give um, their view on parrot behaviour. And I want to try and get some other behaviourists to maybe come along and give webinars. So whenever we're organising that, we will release that to the public. And you can come along and listen to our webinars. Um, so it's nearly time um, to say goodbye um, as I wonder at puzzle out what Sparky's getting up to next. Um, I think it's easier when my colleagues are talking about dogs because their dogs are generally more well behaved than my parrots. But at least you can see that I live with normal 
parrots who do normal stuff. Um, not quite sure why he's crawling down his cage, but I'm sure he has a purpose. So if anybody's got any questions in the future, feel free to ask. Um, do check out the Association of Pet Behaviour Counselors page because we'll be posting loads and loads and more more stuff and also my own parrot page whereby tomorrow and um, i'll be posting some pi other pictures of the princeppi parrots and some more information about them and why they're different to the mainland parrots and then watch this space for what i find out when i go to brazil and um, so thank you very much for joining us and i wish you a lovely weekend and i'm sure sparky does as well perhaps. Good night.